Hi everybody, this is Matt from trailbreak.com. I wanted to bring you a quick video today on setting up some sensors and calibrations for those sensors. It's a question I've received a few times lately from people that have been adding some sensors or not quite sure how they work. So I have here a MXP configuration. And if we hop into just say channel one, as you're going to set something up, we can see we get to type in a name. So this one, let's just start with a throttle position. So we type in throttle position. We're gonna say it is an analog sensor. Vol Instead of voltage for the function, we're gonna pos pick position, and then it gives us the chance we can pick a throttle position. Now under the throttle position, we're gonna see these opportunities to have it auto calibrate here or calibrate on our own. This is what trips up a lot of people. The auto calibrate is for something like a G sensor where you want to calibrate it to this is the zero reading and we can put it in there versus the position calibrated is for something like a throttle position where we want to set zero to 100. So not only do we have a zero, but we can set the full scale on our own. Um, you would use this for something, this kind of calibration for something like a throttle position, a steering position, um, maybe you're being fancy, you're using a string pot somewhere to measure how far something moves, like a sway bar end. Um, you could use this calibration as well. Um, so if this is actually a throttle position, we're going to pick it as that we get to pick the calibration for it. And you can set your sampling frequency to whatever rate you want. Maybe it's 50 hertz. We're going to pick it in inches. We're going to set it with no decimal places. Um, then the other part of this calibration and this, this channel setup screen is the total travel. So if we were using a linear pot for this, we might want to say it's a four inch pot. Or if we bought an aim pot and it was a millimeters, we could say it was a hundred millimeter sensor, um, whatever you may have. If it was a string pot that you're using, it's a 10 inch sensor, all those sorts of things. The other way we could set a throttle position sensor here would be to do it as an angle. If we had a, um, if a angle sensor, like the aim arm sensor that we could use, or maybe we have somebody else's rotary sensor on there, that's going to measure angle and we can still call it throttle position, still going to go at the same frequency. And then we still have the same choices. Do we want an auto calibration or do we want to calibrate it? Being a throttle position, we're going to want to calibrate it and we can tell it here, we get a little bit of a different part where it says, what is the total travel of a sensor? Zero to 180 or maybe our sensor is zero to 90 if that's what you bought. Um, this is where you get to set that to make sure it's correct. If we were setting something like a steering position, we could type in our steering position name. We're gonna have analog signal. Again, it's going to be angle for steering position and we can pick steering position. We would also want to make this one where we get to calibrate it, not auto calibrated. So when we go into that sensor calibration on the device, we can say it's a this is 90 degrees to the left or 90 degrees to the right. This is center. Um, so that way the sensor knows where it is in that full scale. And again, the potentiometer parameter part where we pick 180 degrees is the total travel of the sensor. If it was a rotary sensor, it might be 180. Maybe um, if you're doing steering with a linear sensor, you may have to do this a little bit different. It'd be a more creative way to do it um, depending on your car and how you're going. But I wanted to bring you this uh, short video here to show you the two different ways that we can calibrate things, auto or user calibrated. I hope this clears a couple things up for people as they're configuring their systems and getting ready for the year. Um, as always, please feel free to check us out at trailbreak.com. If you have any questions, you can email us. You can leave um, feedback through the contact form on the website or shoot us a YouTube message below in the video. I hope this helps you out and you have a great day.